Call it a foodie favourite, call it a culinary capital, call it what you want. Uh, Dubai is being recognised as a hub for well, some of the best food in the region and further afield. And that's why tonight on DXB Today, we welcome you all to our food landscape special uh, right here on the show. Let's have a little sit look and see what's coming up on the show tonight. Faris signs up to explore everything that took place at the Arabian Travel Market, the leading international event for the hospitality industry right here in the region. Faris is all over Dubai. He also checks out the third edition of the International Festival of Digital Creativity, Micro Mutech at Osterkal Avenue. And Kunan player Bella Papikan is going to be here to close the night as well. Did I say that right? Kunan? I think that's about right. Exactly as you said, Tom. Dubai is, I'm going to go for it, I'm going to say it's a gastronomic hub, right? Yeah. Everyone comes here and so many outlets are opening up in Dubai. It is the place to be. Yeah, and that comes with its very own challenges True. as well. Uh, we've seen the food landscape here um, expand, uh, develop, explode mm. in recent years. I was quite conscious as well. I mean, yeah, we know that a lot of places look to set up in Dubai, but that's, I think, also spawned this growth of restaurants across the region as well. We're seeing some brilliant restaurants in Dan and Abu Dhabi, um, uh, other parts of the UAE, and of course, across the GCC and all eyes to Saudi Arabia now. But uh, the Dubai Food Festival has done an extraordinary job in helping to build that landscape. Um, with that comes competition. With that <laughs> comes some extraordinary opportunities. And hopefully, we're just gonna give you a little, a little soup some, a little amuse-bouche of what's available this evening. But have you ever had a conversation with your partner over the weekend asking where are you going to eat over the weekend? It's just so much more difficult now, isn't it? I so mean, there's a new trick, by the way. Tom, you should listen to this and you should tell your husband as well, because apparently women um, don't make decisions easily about where to go to eat. So apparently you should say, guess where I'm taking you for dinner tonight? Which means then we would normally say our favourite place and they go, Yes, yes, you're right, absolutely. <laughs> winner, winner. And That's a smart in. one. Right? <laughs> Can you talk to my husband, please? <laughs> yes, certainly. Hello, Mrs. Acosta. Please take Louis for dinner to her favourite place. Now, speaking of food, of course, we've got an expert joining us on the show. So let's see who our guest co-host is going to be. Hi, I am Chef Benit Bhatia, the very first chef from Indian cuisine to get a Michelin star in the world. And I can't wait to see you guys tonight. Chef Benit is going to be right here in a little bit. So excited to see him again. But first, as the leading event for the travel and tourism industry in the Middle East is underway, here's a quick roundup of all that's buzzing down at the Arabian travel market. We are at the Dubai World Trade Center for one of the 31st edition of the Arabian Travel Market 2024, where we're going to be speaking to experts in the world of travel, and I can't wait to get stuck in. So we're really excited about Hatta, one of the best locations in the UAE, and I know there's been a lot going into developing it, so what, what, are we, what can we look forward to? Well, Hatta has a lot to offer, so we've been open since 2018. Uh, you know, Hatta has, like, it's a beautiful destination. You have the wadis, you have the lovely mountain. To start with, you have the outdoor experiences. So you have your kayaking, uh, you have your mountain biking, which is uh, over 55 kilometers in, uh, in, in, in the lovely uh, mountains of Hattan. And you can go between the lovely wadis where you can pass through water uh, banks. Dubai government are investing heavily. Dubai tourism are one of the biggest supporter, you know, for, for the destination. And here we are, I'm a little bit nervous. We are here with none other than the CEO of Fly Dubai, Mr. Raith Al Raith. Thank you so much for being on DXB today. Well, thank you very much for making it. How did you make it here with all this crowd that is outside? I'll be honest, it took me two and a half hours, but I'm happy to be here and happy to meet you. Just moving around all this crowd, fantastic. And it's interesting because it is an entire convention about moving around, and I do believe that Fly Dubai is gonna help us with that even more new destinations. What can travelers look forward to? We try to do our bit. Uh, to try to connect Dubai to more new destinations that are not well connected before. So uh, other than uh, the destination that we already uh, launched uh, in Thailand and the Krabis uh, and uh, in the Far East, we are now announcing that we will have fly to Basel in Switzerland. And we are also the uh, crown of the Baltic states 
Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia will be the new uh, routes uh, for Fly Dubai, connecting uh, Dubai to yet a new exciting untapped market, one for our own people to visit and the residents of Dubai to go to, plus to all of these tourists who would want to come to Dubai from these places, it will be now better and faster and more convenient. What are you showcasing at the Arabian travel market this year? Well, I think, you know, the Arabian travel market is now in its 31st year, which is incredible. You know, the fact that, you know, and you see how busy it is, tells you what this destination is doing. Dubai is really uh, doing really well um, in terms of business. You know, we look at our quarter one performances versus 2023 and we're about 8% up on our rep bar growth. That tells you that the destination is continuing to welcome people here, which is great. Um, we at Imar Hospitality uh, are continuing to expand in terms of our brands. Uh, you know, you'll see the key brands here at the stand. Uh, we've got Address Hotels and Resorts, we've got the Vida. Uh, hotels and Resorts, which is our up, upper lifestyle brand. And then we've got the Palace brand as well, which we've just launched our third Palace Hotel um, in the Creek Harbour destination. Um, it's our fourth hotel in that location and our 25th hotel overall. So there's a lot of things that we can talk about in terms of what we've been doing. So a great quarter one, we're very happy about. And now we're, we've got quite a few openings coming up as we go uh, further into the year this year. Now we're very excited about ATM 2024. What's new this year? What can we look forward to from uh, DET? So it's an extremely buzzing ATM. You know, every year around this time, uh, DET hosts what we call hosted buyers, who are essentially representatives from uh, travel agents, tour operators all across the world to come and experience everything in Dubai, old and new. So we've actually hosted 550 hosted buyers from over 40 markets, around 46 markets, which cover all of our source markets. And they're here to really experience what the city is about, um, including the classics, let's say, like your Burj Khalifa and all the other classic, but also new things, uh, such as the Real Madrid theme park. New destinations, new technologies, and new ways that we travel right here in the hub of the Middle East, right here in Dubai. Arabian Travel Market 2024. I can't wait to see what next year has to offer. Kudos to Ferris for braving the crowds down at Arabian Travel Market. It's been uh, quite the show, as have many in recent times. And talking of Arabian Travel Market, obviously, Food, part and parcel of the hospitality uh, offering uh, around the world. And it's no big surprise that Dubai Food Festival going on at the same time co-concurrently as well. And uh, one man who knows a thing or two about the festival and about, well, food in general, uh, is our co-host. An absolute blessing to welcome back one of my favourite people on the planet, trailblazer in the culinary world. Somebody who has basically revolutionised Indian cuisine uh, on the global scale with his very unique creative twist. The first Indian chef patron to be awarded a Michelin star. Uh, and a man who, of course, has done so much for the food landscape right here in Dubai. Chef Vineet Bhatia, old friend of various shows of ours, <laughs> is back with us here on the server. Great to see you. Nice to be back, Tom. Chef, it's so good to see you as well. And I was, I was just racking my brain a minute ago, you know. The first time, I mean, the first time that you sort of set up here was back in the early 2000s. That's early 2000s, that's well before Michelin even thought about coming here. It's even, it's, it's right in the nascent, the early days of the Dubai Food Festival. There weren't quite half as many restaurants around at that time. So I suppose my question to you, being a, a trailblazer for food the world over, why Dubai? Why this ongoing, why this almost 20 year relationship with Dubai? I mean, I first came to Dubai in 92 on transit to go to London and there was something about Dubai which I really liked yeah. and that was just the old Dubai, the Dera and the Garama area and I was transiting from Mumbai to go to London and that's when I went to UK for the first time and I always had like a little affinity or a love for this place for some reason, I don't know why. So when we were asked to come in 2004 and open a restaurant, uh, we literally jumped at the whole offerings mm -hmm. and I think uh, for me the biggest clincher was uh, the hotel was uh, owned by Sheikh Ahmed Al Maktoum. That's right, yeah. And I love airlines, I love aeroplanes, I love Emirates. <laughs> so it was a no brainer I had to be a part of something there. And I think we were very privy and lucky to actually be able to see the future of Dubai in some shape and form. 
And I remember when I first came in 2004, I was at the Royal Meridian, and in those days there was no palm, there was no JLT, there was no marina. The very first building being constructed in the marina was the Grosvenor House Hotel. Yeah. And we walked across the sand with hard hats on and high visibility jackets, and we got to the location, and I said, this is a hotel, and I said, well, where is everybody? <laughs> and he said, and Pam, the GM then, and still now, still now. Pam will be bless her. And she said, Chef, it'll come. We just want your restaurant here. And when I went back to London, everybody said, are you crazy? Yeah. You want to go into a place where there's not a single building there and you know people are used to eating in Karama and Dera. And I always said, it'll come. If you build Dubai. it, they will come. It will come. <laughs> and Dubai has that vision. And look at it now, 20 years almost. Boy, did it know, come. It, eh? it has come. <laughs> it's come a lock, stock and barrel. My so goodness, it's, down. it's absolutely, it's, it's fantastic. And it's still a staple, as we've said over and over. So many, whether they be local brands or international brands, they're coming and coming, but still, your venues are just those staples that everyone goes to. And there's obviously a clear reason for that. Your Michelin star, because that is such a, a big accolade to have, let alone being the first Indian chef to receive that. What did that feel like when you got, did you get a call or was it an email or a letter? It, it was a call. I okay. still remember it was 2001. And you know, uh, when I first went to UK uh, in 93, I didn't know what a Michelin was. Okay. I had no understanding what the guide was and uh, finally got to understand what it was. And uh, my wife and I, we got married in 97 and my wife said, uh, what is the one thing which you want to achieve in your life? And I said, uh, there is something, but I think I'll never get it because as an Indian, you never get those awards. And she said, what is it? And I said, it's a Michelin. And she said, uh, okay. And she's not from the industry. And in 2001, when we awarded this, the award, I still remember it was morning, seven o'clock. Okay. I had a call and uh, it was those landline numbers <laughs> with those wired phones. So I had to walk down the floor on the steps, seven in the morning, picked a call and said, morning and he said uh, is the chef Vinit and I said yes it is he says how do you feel on getting a Michelin star and I put the phone down <laughs> and she actually called back and she said uh, no 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 I have a press release from the Michelin which says that you're the first Indian chef to have got the star and how do you feel and I said I have no idea how am I supposed to feel incredible and I didn't believe it I thought it was a prank so anyway I get to work around 9 30 get into my restaurant there and the reception was in tears. He said, the phone has not stopped ringing. <laughs> oh my. Something has gone wrong. Oh. And I said, what is it? And I had a call from the evening stand and he said, uh, we would like to have a photo of you because you've got the star. And that was very sunk in, that we have actually got the star. Incredible. So as an Indian cuisine, you know, you're the first one to break the glass ceiling or the bubble. And you open doors for everybody. A pioneer, if you will. A pioneer or a maverick, the way you word it was just, Something built out of lots of love and care. You know, food is about passion. You cook from your heart. And we always say the best food is made when you cook with pure love. Yeah. Anything you touch turns into something very beautiful. Yeah. I love that you still say that because considering you've got restaurants all over the world and you've been in this industry for so many years, you'd think that maybe somehow down the line you get a little bit jaded right with the industry and yet here you are still talking about love and passion for food now since i mentioned that you do have restaurants pretty much all over the world i noticed that you don't have one yet in east asia southeast asia which is where i'm from i was wondering if there was a particular country that you'd like to put up a, a, a restaurant in in east asia i would, would i have i have done pop-ups i've done pop-ups in singapore i've done four pop-ups in singapore and they were all sold out. Oh, wow. And it did extremely well. I mean, Singapore is a great place to open up. Bali is a great place to open up. But what I would love to do is Tokyo. Because mm -hmm. Tokyo is where, you know, you really go, it's like a shrine or like a pilgrimage for chefs to go nowadays. Because the quality of food you get there, the finesse you get there, and it's, it's a Japanese culture, minimalistic, but top quality. Mm -hmm. And when you get great produce, you don't do much to it. It's just a little love and care and attention to detail, which you do on the food, it just brings it to life. You know, people always ask, uh, who are the best chefs in the world, in your opinion? You know, who are the best chefs? Or who are the best cooks? It are the women. Mm. And you ask, why the women? It's because women cook from the heart. They cook for the family. They cook for people they love. And everything they touch is purely out of love. You've clearly never had dinner at my house, <laughs> Chef. Well, you never called me over for dinner. And, I, and there's a good reason for that. <laughs> you, we talked a bit earlier about yeah, just how large the food landscape has become here um, and it's just getting larger day yeah. after day after day with that comes great success with that comes some of the challenges as well talk to me about the Dubai Food Festival um, 
uh, a festival that you've been involved with for, for many years. You've collaborated over a long time uh, and again are doing exactly again this year. Talk to me about your collaboration, but also before that, talk to me about, has it worked? Has the Dubai Food Festival been a, a driving force for food here in the region? You know, as chefs, we try and push the boundary from our side and try to showcase it to the, to the world through our hotels, through our restaurants, through our social media. But you need a government body. You need someone to really back you up. And when you have the DFF of the way Food Festival come to you, you want to be a part of that because they are showcasing on a very large platform which we don't have access. Also, what happens with people who are who really can't go to the fine restaurant most of the time or make it a special location. This is the time to go because they're very well priced. You know, 125 dirhams for a three course meal for lunch or 250 dirhams for a dinner. Normally you pay a lot more on the restaurant, but you are showcasing it to a larger audience. Mm. And that is very important for us. You know, we try and give a certain value to our guests all the time, but we are a small number. You know, we only have 80 seats or 90 seats in restaurants, but these events really create the buzz. It gives the normal guest mm. an option to go and try more restaurants, you know. And there's so much happening in Dubai, you know, the constant flow of restaurants opening up, new things happening, different cuisines being served here. We've got home uh, grown brands now, which is phenomenal. Yeah. You know, that is what is being showcased now. And that for me is very important. And we talk of home grown brands, both Indigo and India are homegrown. Yeah. They were not brought in from London mm -hmm. straight into Dubai. We wanted to create something which was for the local market here, yeah. which understood what the locals like to eat, what do the expats want to have, and what is from the land here. So I think you have to have a nod of sensitivity towards your local produce, to your local suppliers, the local businesses as much as you can, and showcase the land. You know, that is very important for us. Yeah. Chef, this is very insightful, and we have a thousand questions that we still want to ask you, so do stay with us. But since we've touched on Dubai Food Festival, well, let's find out what else is coming up. We are bringing you all that you should look out for at the 11th edition of the Dubai Food Festival with the team of the Dubai Department of Economy and Tourism. So stay right here on DXB Today.